very very windy and it's midday so it's going to be pretty bumpy but we're heading to um, Lake Dunn and then tomorrow morning we'll head on to Longreach. <music> flying into Lake Dunn I was planning to land on the water and as we were flying over I saw there was a goose and I thought it was swimming but then I finally saw that it was actually standing in the water standing on the ground so I um, aborted that and decided to land on the little um, runway which is actually a road um, near the campsite. <music> While we were circling to check the wind, we saw some very familiar looking aeroplanes parked in the parking lot. And uh, to our surprise, we saw that all our friends from Barbecue Beach were also there. A uh, big surprise, as they were going to some other outing that um, we only f found out about when we got there. So all those aeroplanes um, we normally see at Barbecue Beach. cabin for the night. We were met by a farmer's wife, 80 year old, on her four-wheeler who opened up the cabin for us. It wasn't the greatest night. We were met by lots of mosquitoes. The clever next door neighbours slept in their tent inside the cabin. It is an area and a good stop off for the grey nomads on their way to Longreach. Last year this lake flooded really badly and most of the cabins also flooded. We spent one night and then went on our way to Longreach. The next morning we watched our friends take off for a cattle station called Lara Station run by a woman and she was retiring and they were going to have a party and uh, this place is also very famous for its red claw prawns um, which they catch either in nets or with line <music> country is here is so flat you can actually see the curve of the horizon and then every now and again you see these ridges that um, obviously were you know volcanic activity in the old days and they just stretch from horizon to horizon uh, over the whole plain you can literally fly for hours and hours and not see any houses or maybe one car on a road if you do see roads, otherwise it's just absolutely open country for as far as I can see. So Longreach was the end of the rail line uh, from the east coast cities uh, on the way to Darwin because then the Gulf country came after that and they can't, they still, there's no railway line. So this is as far as the, the um, railways go and and it's a long reach away from the coast um, 
it is the where Qantas started. So Qantas used to fly from here, then on the way, rest of the way up to Darwin. And uh, it's got an amazing Qantas museum that's uh, situated here. These are my collapsible fuel bags on a little lightweight trolley. Uh, so we can go to the um, fuel station because I use um, petrol from Mogas and not Avgas. The town has some amazing museums and uh, this is actually at the back of a little shop in the middle of town um, where they have all these old transport wagons and stuff and then just outside of town they've got this amazing it's 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 a mile long just of old machinery with uh, bulldozers and graders and and um, quads second world war quads uh, converted to fire engines and steam engines and anything you could think of this gun collection was amazing. You just walk off the street into this little shop. Uh, there goes a uh, motor train. And just behind glass, there's no security, no one around. You could see over 120 rifles on display from all the different wars. We went to the Qantas Museum at night to a light show that was presented onto the big aeroplanes all about the history of Qantas and how Qantas developed. It was very interesting. We took off from Longreach heading for Emerald uh, into a 35 to 40 knot headwind. So this took a really long time because our ground speed was only 30, 40 knots over the ground and it took hours to get to Emerald. to wait to enter the airport even with COVID there was still some of the big flights coming in Virgin and I think a Jetstar came in so, so we had to wait for them Took off from Emerald the next morning and um, beautiful weather and then we started going into more and more clouds and eventually I decided that I'd go very far on top um, and we flew for home, Mackay, and eventually it just got too thick and I had to go through a hole down through the, through the clouds and try and get underneath. But um, it just got worse and worse and we eventually had to land at a little uh, runway in Nebo and ask Kirst to come fetch us. We wouldn't be able to get over the range down into Mackay. 